Hi, my name is Walter Sweat. Welcome back to the Dixie Steiners. Today, I'm going to try to address some frequently asked questions. And the first one is, why do we call them Steins? If you go to Germany and you ask for a Stein, instead of getting something that looks like this, you're probably going to end up with something that looks like that, a stone. Because Stein is translated to stone in English. So how did we Americans end up referring to our beer drinking vessels as steins when the, the word stein translates to stone. Well, the material that these are made out of in German is referred to as steingut or steinzeug. And we Americans have simply shortened that to the term stein. Stein collectors have defined what a stein is by saying it's a, a drinking vessel with a handle and a lid. So, if you look at something like this, this was manufactured with no intention of it to have or have a lid, and we call this a mug. In some cases, there are beer steins that originally had lids, as you can see this one did, and unfortunately over the years they've lost their lids, so we would call this an unlidded beer stein. So, that's how come we call them steins. Another frequently asked question is, why do beer steins have lids? Well, you know, there was a theory that was uh, surfaced many, many years ago that uh, it was to prevent the spread of the bubonic plague and that it was alleged that there was a, a German law that had been passed throughout the, the country or the kingdoms at that time uh, that required all drinking vessels to have lids. Well, research has failed to show any evidence to support that theory. The modern theory is that it was really just a utilitarian thing. It helped uh, prevent the beer from being spilt when, when the uh, steins were being carried, and it also kept dirt and flies and that type of stuff out from out of the beer. So even today you can go to a German beer garden that's outside, typically uh, tables underneath some trees, and you'll see Germans drinking beer out of a glass uh, mug that looks like this and they will frequently put their beer coaster on the top and that's to keep things from falling into their beer. Sometimes you might see even something a little fancier uh, like this that's used. So that seems to be the case. Uh, manufacturers find this a great opportunity to display their crafts and create some fantastic pieces of art. There's an excellent video that can be found in the reading library on the SCI webpage that, that details the most recent research onto that topic. So, um, right now, that seems to be the best reason why steins have lids. So another question frequently asked is, what kind of beer stein should I collect? Well, the answer to that, I think, is pretty simple. What do you like? You know, the most prolific period of time for beer steins was from about the 1850s to the 1910 time frame, and, and that's where a lot of collectors focus on. But I'll tell you, you know, there are still a lot of other steins out there from other periods. You know, this is more of a modern contemporary type stein that's available today for just a few bucks. Here's a character stein from a German politician from the uh, 1960s and 70s. And then you got the Cold War Steins. These are very popular among a lot of collectors, both those who collect, uh, you know, the antique Steins, as well as those who collect modern contemporary Steins. Uh, Post-World War II, a lot of U.S. troops were stationed in Germany, and uh, a lot of them obtained uh, these what we call Cold War Regimental Steins to commemorate the time that they were there. So, whatever your taste is, there are beer Steins out there, whether they're the very old antique ones or some of the modern contemporary ones. Whatever you like, collect them. Where do you get them? Where do you get beer steins? Well, you know, beer steins, you can go on eBay, you can go on a lot of the other auction places, but I'll tell you the best place that I've always found to buy them is at your local SCI chapter meetings. You have other collectors that bring steins, they show and tell about those steins, they offer them, a lot of times they offer them for sale, and that's where you can get some of the best buys, I think, right there at your local SCI chapter meeting. So, if you're here in the Atlanta area, join us at the next uh, Dixie Steiners meeting. If you're someplace else in the country and you're not anywhere near Atlanta, 
reach out to SCI and see where there's a Beerstein chapter near you and, and uh, show up at one of their meetings. They'd love to have you. So until next time, keep collecting those Beersteins. Ha 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 ha!